matter the case. It is a must that we understand them. And when we get to understand them, it is because we need to know them because our excavation we create changes the force fields of the rock's physical environment. Why are we saying so? We have a wall. You just imagine any wall at all around you. The particles within the rock, the blocks and everything have been arranged and designed by whoever was the contractor that worked on the wall. And these blocks are laid beautifully and well leveled. And you decided to create a window of yourself. That is the excavation you are doing. Then you take out some of these blocks out of it. What do you think will happen? You have disturbed the wall. And so once you have disturbed the wall, the forces that were in equilibrium, they were all together and staying still to give you a stable wall. The moment you created that excavation within the wall or you took portions of the blocks out, you have disturbed the blocks that were sitting on the blocks you have taken out. They were providing stability to the upper blocks. Now you've taken them out. What happens? There should be some bit of redistribution of the stresses. And where they are unable to bear some of the stresses, then you have your wall coming down. And that is why we need to understand the fundamentals, the principles of rock mechanics, since they form the foundation of our mining engineering. Irrespective of the excavation technique we are going to adopt for our extraction of our mineral, our iron ore, our gold ore, our bauxite or manganese or, or whichever mineral we are interested in getting, it is possible for us to specify four common things. One, we have to ensure the overall stability of the complete mine structure defined by the ore source, the mine voids, and adjacent what? Country rock. So what we are saying is that the excavation we are going to create. Our goal is that our pit should be stable. If it is underground, the stop should be stable without collapsing, which is the main ore source should be stable. The void we have created in our previous mine areas should also be stable. And then areas we are yet to mine must also be stable. And that makes the overall stability of the mine structure. One of our goals, again, is to protect the major service openings. So we need to understand that once we are doing our excavation, these things will be disturbed. But then the four core principles of our work as geotechnical officers to ensure that these service opening because the shaft you have created is what is going to be there all throughout the life of the mine. So imagine care is not taken. Then we go into serious operations. Then one day your crew gets in there and then your shaft has collapsed. Let's just imagine how we are getting out of the place. How will we get out? To be interested and so our duty then ensure or provide secure access to safe working places in and around centers of all production so whilst we are doing our drilling and blasting we need to ensure that we have provided a secure access to the places that we are going to be performing our daily activities must be secured so that we don't go in there and remain there forever no then the last one is to preserve the mineable conditions of our mind or reserves what does this mean what this simply means is that there are other you know when you have done your exploration activities 
you have certain reserves you are mining currently, but you have vision of, maybe if it is open pit, you have visions of extending your activities. You want to extend your activities in the future. Maybe you'll be coming for a, a cutback or, yes, a cutback or a pushback. That's how some mining companies call it. In going to do your pushback, that place is the unmined or reserve. But you have already disturbed the place. So going back to do a design in a particular location or that particular place, and then it has been disturbed, how are you going to design? And so you have to ensure that you have preserved these mineable conditions the conditions of those unmined areas, so that if you want to go there and mine, you don't have challenges coming up with good or innovative ideas in terms of how to extract those reserves. So rock mechanics studies physical and mechanical processes, which take place in rock during excavation and addresses itself to the following problem. So what are some of the things we seek to do? One, determine the physical properties and mechanical properties of the rock. We do investigations as geotechnical officers of the conditions of stability of the various slopes that exist in the mine. We try to study the rock pressure and where it is occurring in our mine opening so that we can easily find solutions. Then again, we try to study rock subsidence depending on the type of mine we are doing if it is caving or sub-level caving we want to find out if it is open pit room and pillar open stop we want to be sure that there isn't anything like subsidence happening then finally study the processes of fragmentation of rock during excavation so whilst we have done our drilling and blasting and we are extracting, how is our rock deteriorating in terms of fragments? How is it behaving? Because to design even your drill and blast parameters, it is the geotechnical properties of the rock, like the mechanical and physical properties that the geotech officer will feed the blast man with is what they are going to use to design their blast. And so if you tell me that the rock is soft, that will mean I have to reduce certain parameters of the blast, increase my bedding and my spacing so that I don't have powder, powdered fragment at the end of the blast. And so these decisions or these activities of the rock mechanics we undertake affect our blast process as well. So we are to ensure and observe what is happening with the fragmentation process of our rock too. Then, how then do we solve our rock mechanics problems? We have the experimental methods and then the theoretical methods. Experimental methods, what do we do? We are looking at trying to do some kind of a trial and error approach to solve our problem. So one will be to observe what is happening whilst production is going on, and then take certain experiences from it, which will inform our future designs. Then to determine these physical and mechanical properties of the institute rock, then again, check the properties when we have taken samples to the lab to test, we want to know the conditions in the lab too. And finally, the physical and mechanical properties, if our rock or our formations are in layers, how is each layer behaving? How are the layers interacting with each other? We want to know. So if I am doing these things, then I am applying that kind of experimental method. Then the theoretical method is when you have learned your calculus and your uh, mechanics of machines and your basic mechanics and your physics. 
and you want to apply these principles you have learned to design models that can help you explain the phenomenon of your rock when it is under stress, then you are using the theoretical principle. So then, with the physical properties of the rock, we have got a couple of them. We have the mineralogical composition, the minerals that make up the rocks that we have, the specific gravity, the unit weight, porosity. These are all things about the rock and soil that we need to understand. And they are all the physical properties. They are the physical properties of the rock. These are other properties of the rock, mostly the mechanical properties that we can easily test in laboratory. So we have the strength properties, which are the point load, compressive, triaxial, brazilian, and then the shear. Then we have what we call the stiffness, where we want to use ultrasonic waves to understand how stiff the rock material is. So the stiffness here is talking about the compaction, the level of compaction of the particles. You know, we said that we have um, certain cementing properties that bind the various particles within the rock sample to give us a given rock material. And so we want to know how stiff the various particles coming together to give us the rock, how compacted they are. The level of compaction is what we term as the stiffness. Then we have what we call durability, how our rock is going to behave when they begin to rub against each other. So you remember we said that we need to steady the processes of fragmentation. So when you do the drilling and blasting, and then you are mocking your material. And these materials are hitting on each other as the excavation is being done. We will be checking the durability. If you get to know the durability of the rock, as in when it is exposed to harsh weather conditions, raining and drying weather conditions, how is it going to transform this rock material? is what we term as the durability. So if it goes through this process and it's still strong, it is recording higher durability values, then you say your rock is indeed durable. And so under that too, we have the slaking and abrasion test. 